Hello everybody! Watch this video to find out how to recover a virtual machine with QNAP QTS, how to install QTS 5.1 operating system on a VMware virtual machine and how to recover data from such virtual machine or from physical disks in a QNAP NAS. Hello friends! If you need to recover deleted data, view or restore removed browsing history, Hetman Software Products will help you. Follow the link in the description, download the necessary program for free, install it and analyze the disk. The utility will show you the data you can recover, so you will be able to view it or get it back. In our channel and blog you will find solutions to any problem, from installing an operating system or configuring it to fixing possible bugs and errors or optimizing mobile gadgets. Our specialists will answer any questions you ask in your comments under the videos or articles. Creating a virtual machine with QNAP QTS can be very useful if you want to create your own data storage or use the functionality of a QNAP network storage in your own local environment without buying any additional hardware. And in today's video, I'll show you how to create a QNAP virtual machine in VMware and how to set it up as a local server. You'll see how to prepare for creating a virtual machine, how to configure its settings, how to install QTS and how to check if it works properly. Finally, we'll try to recover data from such virtual machine. I'm going to show you how to create a virtual machine with QNAP TS1685 interface model and one of the latest firmware versions 5102348. Before you can install a virtual machine with QNAP QTS, you should make some preparations. Here are a few important steps you need to take. Make sure that your computer complies with the minimal requirements to run virtual machines. Usually, it means having enough system memory and hard disk space, and a capable CPU on top. First of all, download and install a VMware or Proxmox hypervisor. After that, download a QNAP bootloader image. You will find the link in the description under this video. When all these steps are complete, you are ready to create a virtual machine with QNAP QTS. To create a virtual machine, download the archive containing a virtual disk image of the QNAP operating system. I'll leave the link in the description. Extract the image to any convenient directory. Create a folder for the future virtual machine and copy the downloaded VMDK file there. After that, start VMware and click Create a new virtual machine. Leave everything as it is and choose a 64-bit Linux as an operating system. Assign a name and location, add the path to the folder containing the VMDK file. Let's add a few more cores and give this machine at least 6 GB of RAM. All other settings should remain unchanged. In the end, this disk will be removed so you can leave its settings as they are. Now that the virtual machine is created, you need to make some changes to its settings. Open the virtual machine settings and remove the hard disk and the DVD drive. In the network settings, change the NAT connection to bridged. After that, add a system disk. Click Add, Hard Disk, ITE, Use a physical disk and give the path to the disk image file that you have downloaded before. Click Finish. Now add other hard disks. I'll choose four physical disks. They must be of SATA type, otherwise the system may not recognize them during the installation process. Now 
Now you should change some network adapter options in the settings file of the virtual machine. To do it, go to the folder where the machine is stored and open the VMX file with the Notepad app. In the line Ethernet0.virtualdev, change the value from E1000 to E1000E. Save and close the file. After that, go to VMware and run the virtual machine. This is when you should be quick enough to press the up or down arrow button when this screen appears, so that you can boot your system in the System Rescue Production mode. This will boot the tiny core utility. You can use it to modify the bootloader settings. In the settings, you can choose the storage model and the operating system version. To do it, run the terminal. For starters, check if the device can recognize the network. Run the ifconfig command to display network adapters. After that, Check if there is any Internet access by pinging the DNS server. To change bootloader settings, type this command. There are three lines that can be modified. Model type, which stands for your device model patched firmware, the firmware version which is used, and download URL, the download address. It shows a well-tested model, so I won't change it. You can find the latest firmware version on the official QNAP website. Press I to edit the file. Now it can be changed. Let's edit the firmware version. I'll take one of the latest versions. And I will leave the link without changes. To save your changes, click Escape and then Column. And then type WQ. Now that you have edited the bootloader file, you can run it. Here is the command to use. And wait for the download to finish. If the download was successful, you will see this on your screen. Otherwise, the system will display an error message. Now you should restart the system and wait until it boots. It takes from 10 to 15 minutes, or even longer, for the system to boot and everything depends on your computer's hardware. If you did everything right, the system will boot and display the IP address of your storage device. Open any browser you prefer and type the IP into the address bar. Also, you can find your network storage with the help of the QFinder app. When in the browser window, you should finalize the installation of the operating system. In the window where you choose the system version, click Next. Set the username and password. After that, you can set up a static IP address. Check the settings and click Apply to confirm them. The system will warn you that all drives will be erased as a result of initialization. Click Initialize to continue.
it begins the installation and the process of applying your settings. When it's over, you will see a window congratulating you on successful installation. To access the NAS Settings Manager, click Go to NAS Management. Now the installation is over, and you have a virtual machine running a latest QTS version. Your further steps include creating a volume, configuring access, and enjoying a properly working network attached storage. In the same way, you can turn an ordinary PC into a NAS storage with a QNAP operating system. The only tricky aspect is that you will need a suitable network adapter, since the firmware only contains network drivers for a limited list of models. What you need is an adapter similar to Intel E1000E, otherwise your device won't be recognized in the network. For installation on a computer, you need to download an IMG file and record the image from the archive to a pen drive. For example, you can do it with an app called Win32 Disk Imager. After that, you should boot your computer with this pen drive and follow the steps I have described in the previous part of this video. In order to create a RAID on this specific device model, open Control Panel, Storage and Snapshots. Click on New Volume, select the disk that the new array should include, choose the RAID type, and click Next. Then Create. The system will warn you that it clears all data on the selected hard disks. Click OK to confirm it. After that, the process of building the array, resyncing and formatting the disks begins. Now that the pool is created, the system will suggest creating a new volume. To do it, click New Volume, choose one of the three options, and click OK. Now you can create a shared folder and upload some data to your network attached storage. For each shared folder, the Recycle Bin feature is activated by default. If you accidentally deleted some important files, just open the Recycle Bin folder in the file station and restore them by right-clicking on the file or folder and clicking Recover. If the Recycle Bin feature is inactive, or you deleted files without sending them through the Recycle Bin first, your lost files can be recovered with the help of a specialized recovery tool. Data can be lost because of many factors such as various errors when processing files, hardware failures, and specifically hard disk and RAID controller issues. When a network storage device is down, your RAID will be destroyed, and in order to retrieve any data from there, you need a special software tool to rebuild the RAID and get access to important files. Such tool, Hetman RAID Recovery, supports most file systems and all popular RAID types. If you used physical disks, connect them to a Windows computer directly. Take the drives out of the storage device and connect them directly to the motherboard of a Windows computer. If you use virtual disks, upload their images to the recovery tool. To do it, open Tools, Mount Disk, select the virtual machine type from the list and click Next. Specify the path to virtual disk files. OK. 
and click Next again. They will appear in the program's window. It will build a RAID system automatically, so you'll be able to scan it and access the necessary files. Right-click on the volume and choose Open. Choose the search type – File Scan or Full Analysis. For Full Analysis, you need to specify the file system type used for the hard disks. When the search is complete, open the folder where your files used to be stored. You can use the preview window to see their contents. Find the ones you need to restore, select them, and click the Recovery button. Specify where to save the data, choose the disk and folder, and click Recover again. When the recovery process is over, you'll see all the files in the specified directory. Summing up, we can say that creating a virtual machine with QTS operating system may seem to be a complicated process, but it's not that difficult if you make some preparations and follow the instructions. Dealing with data is not always smooth and seamless, and sometimes a part of information can be lost. But data recovery tools like Hetman RAID Recovery can become an irreplaceable tool to restore important information whenever it happens. No matter what, always remember to back up all important stuff regularly and keep it in a safe place. And that is all for now. Hopefully this video was useful. Remember to click the like button and subscribe to our channel. Leave comments under this video to ask questions. Thank you for watching and good luck.